Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Samsung's data migration software version 4.0. Now I've made this video a couple times in the past, both for versions 3.0 and 3.1. It's really not that difficult to use. So what I'm gonna do in this video is pretty much the same I've done in the previous two, kind of go over the software, how to basically initialize, install your drives, how to download and install the software, and then how to you know transfer the data from your older drive to your newer Samsung SSD. After all that's over with, I am going to try to spend some time and answer some of your questions on the things that you all asked me in the previous videos. So let's go ahead and jump into it and get started. So before you can use the software, you have to connect your new SSD to your computer or laptop. So if you're working with a laptop, the first thing I would do will be to open up your laptop and see if you have an extra slot for your SSD. If not, then you're going to have to buy an adapter. Now these adapters are on Amazon. Um, you can get them now with USB-C. Um, this one here is a little bit older. It's a USB 3.0 adapter. And all you have to do is basically connect it to your SSD and then plug it into your laptop. You are going to want to make sure that you are connected to the USB 3.0 port so that you get the fastest transfer rates. If you're working with a desktop, then you're going to connect this drive, like say a standard SSD, like you would any other drive. You're going to connect it to say to power, say to data, and then you can, you know, boot the machine from there. But make sure when you connect your new SSD that the computer is turned off. Last but not least, if you're upgrading to an M.2 SSD, then you also have to get it installed into your motherboard before you start the data migration process. I recommend that you install your M.2 SSD in the slot closest to your CPU if available. And then you may also have to go into the BIOS and configure some settings so that you can see the drive in Windows. Once the drive is connected to either your laptop or desktop, then you may have to initialize the disk or basically make it to where it can be usable in Windows. So the first thing you're going to do is go to Computer Management and then from there click on Disk Management. If it is a new SSD, then Windows may not detect the drive automatically. So in Disk Management, you may get a window indicating that the SSD needs to be initialized. Go ahead and follow those prompts and then that will go ahead and take care of that part. During the initialization, you're going to have to pick a drive letter and maybe give it a name. It doesn't really matter what drive letter you assign it. You can kind of pick any letter you want. In this case, I named mine SSD so it would be easy to identify. Here you can see now we have our C drive, the, the source drive, and then we have now the new target SSD, which is labeled volume D. Now let's install the software. So you're going to go to Google and do a Google search for Samsung data migration. Click that top link and then scroll down to where you see a heading called data migration. Click on the drop down arrow and you should see version 4.0. Once the download is complete, go ahead and go to the folder where you download your files and go ahead and start the installation process. You may get a UAC indicating that the software is trying to make changes to your computer. Go ahead and allow this and then pick your language. Now that the installation is complete, we're going to go ahead and run the software. From here, you're going to select your source disk, which is going to be at the top. And then you're going to also select the target drive, which is going to be the new SSD or the SSD that you just installed into your laptop or your desktop. Notice that once you select the target disk, it shows you how much data or how much space is going to be used on that new SSD. Once you have selected your source and your target disk, you can now click start. What will happen is you're going to get a pop up basically saying that all data on the target drive will be deleted. So if you're using an older SSD, then you want to take note that everything on there will be deleted. So you may want to back it up first. But in this case, since we're using an SSD with no data on it, we're not going to worry about it and we're going to go ahead and continue. Now the data transfer process can take a while depending on the specs of your computer, the connection you have with your SSD. I'm not going to show you the entire process, but basically once we're finished, I'll show you what it looks like in File Explorer. So here you can see using File Explorer, all data was transferred from the source over to the new target SSD. Once the data transfer is complete, in order to boot from your new SSD, you either have to go into your laptop or desktop and physically switch the drives, 
or you have to go into your BIOS and actually change the boot order. So here I'll show you that you can actually go in and swap out the, you know, the drives physically, or you can actually go into the BIOS and then change the boot order. If you plan to keep both drives, then what you're going to have to do is actually go into your BIOS, go under the boot tab, and then change the boot order. Now, how you get into your BIOS is going to vary, so just check with your motherboard documentation so that you know how to get into your BIOS. Now, probably the most popular question I got was, could you use this software to transfer your data to any other type of drive, whether it be Western Digital, Seagate, or whatever? You cannot use this software to transfer data to any other drive except for a Samsung drive. So I'll go ahead and list those drives here. And then I'm also going to link uh, pretty much the list of the drives that it's currently compatible with. And uh, just in case the list here kind of goes out of date at some point, I'll link it below and you can always go check that out. So if you plan on just migrating your data, um, one of the things I would recommend is just go check that list to make sure that you know the drive you plan to purchase is on that list. So the second most popular question I got in those previous videos were, could you pick and choose what you transferred in the migration? And unfortunately you cannot. This is pretty much a total disk migration. It will transfer whatever is on that drive. So if you have an operating system and a bunch of files, then it's gonna take everything that's on that drive and transfer it to the new drive. If you need to you know, transfer only a specific set of files or whatever, then it's just simpler to just install the drive and then copy and paste everything over. And if you're wanting to just do like an operating system only, then I suggest anyway to just go ahead and do a fresh install of your operating system. And the third most popular question I got as far as the software goes is could you transfer data from a larger drive to a smaller drive? So let's just say the source disk is like one terabyte and then you're trying to transfer to like a 500 gigabyte SSD and you can do that. The only thing is, is that it's not really about the size of the source drive or the target drive. It's about the amount of data that you're transferring. So whatever you have as far as your, you know, your target drive, let's just say again, like a 500 gigabyte SSD, then you're going to have to make sure that the amount of data you're transferring to that new drive is less than 500 gigabytes. So it doesn't really matter what size the source drive is, as long as the amount of data that you're transferring is less than the target drive. All right guys, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Once you get the drives connected to your computer, you get the software downloaded, you let the transfer go through the process of getting everything moved from the source over to the target disk, it's pretty easy. Now, if you have any questions over anything that I did not cover in this video, please go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer any of those questions, as many of those questions as possible, because I do want to help you guys as far as getting your, you know, your data transferred and get your computer set back up. I appreciate you guys giving a small channel like this an opportunity to help you out and hope to see you all again. See you all next time.